five, four, three, two, one. Welcome. My name is Ron Louette, and I've worked with human element material for a long time. And I appreciate this chance to get to talk with you about it. Um, I usually uh, have the chance to talk to people live, so this is the, one of the first times I've tried to uh, stay at my own house and talk to an iPhone about this material. Uh, but let's give it a try. Um, to begin with, I want you to think of business as a game. And what I do as a consultant is to help people to play the game better. Uh, so let me start with my own childhood experience of playing games. Um, my favorite game was Monopoly, as it is for many people. But realize that Monopoly is basically a war game. So is checkers, so is chess. Uh, the aim of the game is to drive others out of business, to destroy them, and have fun doing it. Uh, what I was learning while playing Monopoly uh, was that the winner takes all. Uh, trust no one. Uh, everyone that's smiling is your enemy, and cheat if you can. These are not great preparation for adult life. The other thing you learn in Monopoly is that you can't carry over your winnings. You can't take your property and your money to the next game or no one will play with you. If you force them to play, they will lie, cheat, steal, and throw the game around. And that's why in the human element and the other programs that are based on the human element like radical collaboration and green zone thinking they all seek to change war games into collaborative games uh, to invite people to change the very way they think about playing business to change the purpose to change how we treat each other uh, to train to change how we manage ourselves there are also six increasingly strong outside pressures uh, that are forcing us to be more collaborative. Uh, and just to quickly name them, let me name, name them. Uh, problems are more complex. Things are not simple anymore. No perfect answers, no simple answers. Right, we're more connected. Everybody can talk to everybody almost immediately. Uh, there's more knowledge. It keeps doubling every year, year and a half. No one person can know everything. Uh, the accelerated speed of change. Uh, also the fact that most people in the world now want to vote. Uh, everybody wants to say in how to solve the new problems. And lastly, uh, brain science itself is showing us the way the human mind works. And it works better when people feel safe to collaborate rather than when they're acting out of fear and danger. Now what all six of these have in common is to be successful with any of these, you have to learn to work better together. And so it's our belief that in the end, sustainable business communities and countries and civilizations are made possible only when there's enough trust and good relationships between businesses and the people they serve. Cuban element programs help build safe work environments where people can talk about anything. They help build social capital. Social capital are relationships of trust and loyalty and collaboration. And they build the capacity for self-reflective mindsets. It teaches individuals how to manage their, their own reactivity and how to act out of their own deepest values. So here today, I'm going to teach you briefly a week's worth of human element concepts. Eight basic principles um, that I think might help you be more successful in building relationships with other people. And as I list each one of them, just think about how you might do that in your own life or in, in this form that you're at. Number one. Slow down and breathe. You might do that now. 
take a breath. And as you do, see if you can pay attention. Pay attention to what's really going on in the room. Pay attention to what's really going on with yourself. Start noticing. And out of that deeper sense of calm, calmness, realize that you can make a choice, which is the principle number two. The choice particularly of what you're going to pay attention to, who you're going to pay attention to. Where are you going to invest your energy? How do you plan on treating other people? Choosing is about being proactive in the moment with your own awareness. Next, I want you to think about signaling. Signaling your willingness to cooperate and connect with other people. You might think of this as going first. The brain is calibrated to go second, to be cautious, and wait for things to be safe before you take action. The human alone approach is to practice being the way you think it ought to be and to invite people into a new way of thinking and being with each other. Think about how you might do that in this workshop. Principle four is to practice listening and asking good questions. The idea here is to stay in touch with how other people are seeing things. Ask and then listen to them. What, about, what are they thinking about? How do they analyze something? What are their feelings and fears about the situation? What are their hopes and dreams? This communicates a different level of your willingness to care about them and do collaborative behavior with them. Principle five is to be proactive about suggesting clear relationship agreements if you decide to work together. What are the house rules about how we're going to treat each other? Will we seek mutual gain and benefit? Will we treat each other with integrity and respect even if we disagree? Will we, sit in will we set good boundaries with each other? Have these talks before you get into complicated issues. Five, explore and share problems together. Make sure you understand how the other person sees it. Talk about the choices that you have and that the two of you have and can make together. Principle seven, try something. Do an exploratory project. But try something. Talk about how it worked, adjust. Realize that solutions are messy these days. It's all right to experiment as long as you keep talking. Eight, express appreciation. At every step of the process, See if you can communicate to the other person your appreciation for their attempts, for their efforts, not just the outcomes. Let them know you care about them over and beyond this one problem. That you see the possibility of a long-term relationship and the things not only that you're solving now, but that you can work together to solve other things in the future. And finally, number nine, accept turmoil. This is a more personal development of a mindset that suggests uh, there's no way to avoid turmoil. Uh, don't take it personally. Uh, don't take it if things get very, very messy. It's the nature of complex problems. Uh, people misunderstand things. They make mistakes. Take a breath. Try it again, get back in the boat. Um, agreements, having difficult times come and go. What you're looking for is to build a basic 
safe harbor, a safe container, so that you can deal with and talk about anything in order to solve problems together. And finally, my recommendation to you is uh, not wait to try any of this. Uh, it is a little overwhelming um, and it can be intimidating at time uh, to, to try these new behaviors and new mindsets. Uh, my guide in this comes from a 12-year-old Zulu boy uh, who I read about in South Africa, uh, Natasha Johnson. Um, he was an AIDS advocate. He was 12 years old. He's uh, since passed away. But the motto he used uh, in his efforts to make a change in that situation in South Africa was, was, do all you can with what you have in the time you have in the place you are. And that's the invitation I have to you about motivation is start now. Start with the room you're in at this forum. Start with the people in this room, perhaps, who you haven't met yet. Um, reach out to them. And the last thing I want to uh, encourage you with uh, actually occurred this week. Um, and it's an item from the New York Times this last Monday. Um, just to give you a sense that all of this is not impossible. Uh, this is a report, and let me read here, that nearly 200 chief executives, including Apple, Pepsi, Walmart, tried on Monday, tried on Monday to redefine the role of business and society. Breaking with decades of long-held corporate orthodoxy, the Business Roundtable issued a statement. The statement said the purpose of a corporate corporation should no longer to be advance only the interests of the shareholders. Instead, the group said they must also invest in their employees and protect the environment and deal fairly and ethically with their suppliers. It concluded with, while each of our individual companies serves its own corporate purpose, we share a fundamental commitment to all of our stakeholders. We commit to deliver value to all of them for the future success of our companies, our communities, and our country. So that's my invitation to you about exploring how the human element can support all other business efforts because it seeks to change the fundamental nature of the relationship between the people in those efforts. Ones that moves us towards a commitment to mutual gain mutual care, and mutual effort. So that's my thoughts for today. I encourage you to uh, try some of this stuff on um, in the next session that you do. Look across the room, see somebody you might want to express some appreciation to, see somebody you've never met before that you can go and go first in making connection. Thank you very much for listening.